Well, the main lesson here to be really blunt is to not feel like you're untouchable just because you got a passport and you're in another country. Because your energy can't lie. It can't. You got to change your intentions in your heart and mind in order for your energy to change. You can't hide it. And they may not be able to tell what's wrong with you right away, but eventually they'll figure it out. And if they don't figure it out, when it comes time for you to meet their families, because again, these are traditional women, they don't do the dating, they go right into marriage, which means you have to meet her family and her dad and impress everyone in her family. If you do all of that successfully, then you got the traditional wife you wanted. Congratulations. Otherwise, before you catch flights, catch this reality check. Hello, YouTube. It's your boy, the Passport Bro Wingman, coming at you again with another YouTube video. And the title of this video is called passport bros you ain't untouchable catch this reality check foreign women will figure you out says delusional woman um and so anyway um the clip you just you just saw was a a woman who was um going off on the passport bros uh and the sum of what she was talking about was um she was saying pretty much the premise of our whole argument is that um for the most part, most passport bros are like creeps and um, and we're trying to manipulate women. We're going overseas to manipulate them. But the problem, she said, the problem is that um, we carry a, like a dark energy with us. And no matter where we go, no matter what we do, in some way, the women will figure it out and they'll realize that um, that we're not who we say we are. They're going to unmask us. And even if we try to get over with them, you know, even if we are able to get over on them, they come from strong families where their brothers and fathers and stuff will be able to figure it out and tell their daughters to stay away from us and, and that kind of thing. Um, and then she went on to talk about the process of actually finding a, a wife over there. She was like, and even if you are able to do that, um, when you, as soon as you get over there, they're going to want you to marry them immediately. They don't date. You just have to get married to them and move on from there. And, um, and, the, and then even after that, when you want to marry them, you got to go through their family. So the next step was she was trying to say that, uh, it's a difficult process for the most part. So once again, all this is really is, um, so first she reverted to there's something wrong with you. You know, uh, you can't run from who you are, no matter where you go, you are the same person, uh, the same, you know, success or lack of success or lack of success you had here will be the same when you go overseas. It doesn't matter. Th this again is just to discourage men from traveling overseas and lead a plantation. And then, and then, um, to add, add to it, if she can't keep you from being scared to travel overseas or, or if she can't convince you that, um, the women overseas can't, I don't want you. The next tag that she reverts to is it's going to, it's going to be a whole lot of work trying to get married to them. Um, you're not going to be able to enjoy yourself, you know, so you might as well just kind of, for the most part, stay here and deal with them. So that that's her two tactics. So um, I kind of want to just break this down real quick. It's probably going to be a short video, but, um, you know, first off, as, as, as we know, um, the cultures in these other countries are not the same as there are in the United States. I've already stated in, in many of my videos that, um, you know, for the most part, in many of these other countries, the man is still at the head of the household. They still have like a patriarchy going there. Uh, also, for example, um, in the Philippines, the if you make over about 14000 a year, you are pretty much a high value man for the most part. So put it this way, women will be checking for you. Not only that, um, I don't know if you noticed recently, especially on TikTok, there's been a variety of different videos of Filipinas reaching out to the men in America and welcoming them and, 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 and opening their arms to them and saying that we welcome you. We're, we're looking for our passport kings. And uh, now I actually will display a clip of one, of a classic one at the end. But uh, just to let you know that they, they are looking for you, they are checking for you. And as I stated before in some of my previous videos, me, myself, I've been to uh, Thailand. I haven't been to the Philippines yet, but when I went there, actually on my first visit, um, as I stated before, there was a taxi, ca taxi cab driver I met there. He was trying to get me, he was trying to get me to meet his daughter. He was telling me about her. He wanted me, he uh, pretty much got my Facebook. He wanted me to connect with her and meet up with her. 
And pretty much I said it to say that that's not, that story is not original to myself. I've talked to many other Password Bros who've had the same experience in um, in Thailand and the Philippines. Even um, Brazil, yes, talked about how in Brazil, there was a guy there that actually tried to hook him up with his daughter, with, with her daughter as well. Um, so you got to consider that, um, and keep in mind that even in some countries, they still have like dowries and, and that kind of thing. So um, the thing is... Um, it, it kind of really helps the family because first off, in many of these countries, there's a lot of poverty, jobs are scarce, and it's it, and sometimes it's actually a struggle for like you know for like the man to actually provide for everybody, including like his uh, his children and um, his children and grandchildren. So it helps a lot when um, like one of his daughters they go off and get married because now there's another guy to provide for his daughter. That's one less burden for himself. So in a sense. Uh, it actually works in their favor when they actually marry foreigners, especially since we're bringing in far more money than like the average person would make in some of their countries. As I told you before, if you go to uh, Colombia, the um, average salary is only about, you're talking only about like $300, like $300 a month. So um, keep that in perspective. Um, so so there's that. And then other things she talked about was, um, so so here we go again with, they 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 are... Bent on believing that these men, they don't want other women, don't want them to. They just can't understand why other women would be attractive to us or find value in us if they don't find value in us. So it's like they, as, as we stated before, like it's, it's like they don't want you, but they don't want you to be happy either. They just want you here being a cleanup man, being an OnlyFans subscriber or being like a... um a tender admirer in which you just like like their pictures or swipe on them just for their ego. So if you're not there doing that anymore, they have nothing back to fall back on when Chad and Tyrone or Pookie and Ray Ray are treating them poorly. They have no one to run to and clean up their tears and clean up their mess. And here's the thing about it. It's just going to get, you know, we're just going to keep going with this passport bro movement thing. It's just going to keep growing. It's going to get bigger and bigger. Things gonna get worse in the states as far as dating, especially for the lovely ladies. It's not gonna. It's gonna, you know. I, I think recently on um, Fresh and Fit, uh, he had asked them do a lot, some of the ladies know about like um, the passport bros, and a lot of them supposedly act like they hadn't really heard of it, heard about it. I think some of them did, some of them did not. He only did that. He was trying to show that maybe the movement isn't that relevant, but no, I, I think right now we're kind of like a. Um, how can I put it? It's like, it's kind of like right now, most people don't know that eviction is on the rise. You don't really know it. It's it's kind of like um, after the COVID money stopped, eviction is taking place across the country. It is happening very rapidly. Most people don't notice it, but I, I believe within about a few years, you're going to really notice it. It's going to be almost like devastating and the thing is is there but people are so distracted by the news and other things they're not really aware of it and i really feel like the passport bro movement is like that i just feel like a lot of women right now some of them are feeling it but not too many but as this economy gets worse and worse because they're about to raise the interest rates again as it gets worse and worse a lot of the covid programs and that that kind of thing go away as long as more automation comes in they start removing all those you know basic jobs that a lot of women it would do in general as a lot of that starts to go away and they see it's not that much money to go around and um and as that going on along with the password bros leaving the country they're going to see that in the clubs there's going to be less men there there's going to be less men approaching them they're going to go on tinder there's less men swiping on them they're going to start and, 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 a lot, and in many in many cases they're dependent on these men to kind of help them kind of supplement their income take them out on dates so they can do like their dinner and dash. Those men are no longer going to be there. So they're going to start filling. I just think it's going to be like a slow process that's on its way. I feel like, like they say, like winter is coming. I feel like right now it's kind of like, you know, the first part of winter where like you go from fall from being like that warm breeze to start to be very cold. And then slowly but surely you should, you should feel like the temperature dropping and you know we're like in that stage. I feel like we're right there. I feel like soon they're going to start noticing this and it's going to be even bigger. I just feel like this is pr pretty much like the first wave of like the passport bro movements, but it's going to be many more waves to come. 
So let me go back. So to continue on, this last point I wanted to make was uh, she talked about dark energy, you know, put, put it away. She won't know the value of the passport roles and the men going overseas until it's too late. Until it's too late. And once again, she's in her 40s. She has her kids by Pookie Ray Ray chat. Then she will find value in those men and she'll see what they say. Her eyes will be open, but it will be too late at that point. She didn't want us in her prime. We don't want her in her decline. She will notice it then. The problem is the reason it's taking them so long is because these these older women are not are doubling down on their mistakes and and not telling the younger women that they're making a mistake by passing over these these decent you know decent men who can um, add stability to their life. So that's that. So she just doesn't see it. Now the other thing she tried to say was is there's going to be a long process of you meeting a woman there, dating her, divorcing her, and I just wanted to press on that a little bit. So here's the thing. Um, when you go to these countries, you're not going to have a problem dating women. You don't have to immediately uh, marry the woman once you get there. That that's that's a complete that's a complete lie. Um, and it's almost it for the, for with the exception of maybe maybe some of the Muslim countries or like even Indonesia, which recently passed this law where uh, I think sex before marriage is illegal now. But even in spite of that, there's still going to be people doing it. But the, but the point is outside of those type of countries most of the other countries especially the ones yeah spe specifically ones that are non-muslim non-muslim those countries in general um you can just i mean because here's the thing you know you don't want to just immediately go and marry somebody like there are stories literally of men even on youtube there was a guy i think he was in his 70s he met a um he met a, a thai thai woman thai woman she's probably like in her late i think she's like in her early 30s or something like that he's like 70 so within two weeks he he, he he fell in love with her and he wanted to marry her and they got married immediately now i wouldn't recommend you get married that soon i know no i know that sometimes being a passive role and flying you you, you can't you, you in some cases you're not really able to stay there like year round you have to maybe make you know do your your visits in spurts like maybe you visit for a month or two then you go back home then you come back out again so you might feel like you don't have as much time but I would caution against immediately just marry somebody after like two weeks. That's too that's too soon. You you really need to vet the person that you're gonna make your lifelong uh you know spouse because um me myself, as I, as I stated before, I'm engaged to a Venezuelan woman. I've known her for like over at least like three years now. So um and and within that, you know, I've learned a whole lot about her. She's learned a lot about me. And the whole point is that is that you need to really see how compatible you are because because here's the difference in the states you're you know many cases if you're not like a celebrity something like that you're pretty much invisible to a lot of women and even if you try to get her they're doing things now where they want to deposit up front to go on a date with them uh they don't want to do you know um yeah they, they want to deposit up front any little thing they're disqualifying you for it so it has guys having to try to quote unquote learn game uh it just um the quality is very poor, and in many cases, you're just going to get treated very poorly. So, and that, so unfortunately, because men are so starved for attention and dates in the states, we we tend to lower our standards and just put up with anything. And, and in many cases, some guys are so thirsty just to have a date. They just, like I said, they put up with anything. And um, and the first, you know, and, and in many cases, some guys get uh, what's the word? Um, I'm not gonna say needy, but kinda. And, and as we know that that kind of pushes a lot of the women away. But what I said I said that to say that once you leave the United States, even if you go to Mexico, not don't go to Tijuana, go to like uh, Mexico City or somewhere further further away from American influence. But once you go down into Latin America, parts of Asia, getting dates is very very simple. Getting dates is very very simple. Like once you, um, for example, you go to the Philippines, just open up your Tinder app, plenty of dates. You go to the DR, same thing. Um, even in like Colombia, uh, Brazil. Now I caution you about the dating apps, mostly because, especially in like Colombia, um, you got to be careful because although there are some women with good intention, there are some with bad intentions as well. So I'll just say use with with strict strict caution. But it's very but either, but put it this way, even without the apps, it's very easy to get dates. That being said, you can date. Um, you know, yeah, you can date several, you know, put as well, you're going to have to initially at least date a few women 
I would say not not one by one, but at the same time, as long as you, you know, for the most part, you letting them know I'm just I'm not really looking for anything serious. I just want to date and see where things go. You know, as long as the woman agrees, there's no problems. You can date several different women. And the purpose of that is not so much to be playing the women, but it's, it's so that you can really see if you guys are a good match. Don't just rush into a relationship. Don't don't do that. Don't don't listen to these um <laughs> these disingenuous women on TikTok, on YouTube, saying stuff about the password bros. Take your time. They they let Pookie and Ray Ray and these celebrity guys play with them all the time. There's no push for them to like they're not on their necks like they're on our necks. For some reason, we try to do it. Uh, we gotta hurry up and get married. Uh, why y'all out there just trying to sleep around all the women? Uh, y'all ruined the women in America, y'all trying to ruin, ruin overseas when in fact it's the opposite. Most of the the men in general who are traveling overseas, we've struggled in the States, and most men are starved, starved of sex, starved of affection. So generally the men who will mess around with these women in the States, these are like the Chats and Tyrones and the celebs and that kind of thing. So Passport Bros in general, we're, although, like I said, I myself had had some success and many Passport Bros as well, we're primarily not the guys who are causing this damage. We're not the ones doing this. It's this small percentage of men in America who really, and not all of them, but some of them are causing like the havoc in America. So you have that there. So either way, when you go to these other countries, even like the Philippines, just explore your options. Don't listen to anything these people are saying. You even, you know, even now with these uh, quote unquote feminists, feminists in Brazil and these other countries trying to pop up because of American influence, ignore them. As I stated in some other videos, they don't have the infrastructure there to make their form of fem feminism the same way as it is in the states. And in many cases, the feminism there is really only about, more so about women having equal pay, equal jobs. Versus here in the states, it's more about controlling men and having privilege over men and being like a protected class and that kind of thing so it's a little it's completely different it's trying to spill over there but it's not it's not the same so that's that now i'm gonna end on this last note so she talked about it being very difficult to find a woman there and then get married because the men are going to check you that's not true at all so here's one little last point i want to leave you with it actually is illegal to get divor divorced in the philippines i'll say that again it's illegal to get divorced in the philippines so a lot of times what the guys do there is there's a concept that um, Big Truck Series, Big Truck Reviews talked about and which is a thing called, I believe it's like a shoot and scoop, which is like uh, the Filipino version of uh, pump and dump in America, guys pump and dump women. So what a lot of men do, not a lot of men, but some men there do is uh, because they don't want to be stuck with one woman because once you get married, that's it. There's even there's even. Um, of, uh, adultery laws in the Philippines where people can get punished even to some degree serve jail time so a lot of men there know if they get married to a woman that's really like the only woman they could be sleeping with and they're pretty much tied to that woman for life so what a lot of men there do is they either they don't get married they almost do like the MGTOW type of thing and they just either go their own way or they just wind up being like a womanizer and they just deal with a bunch of women but they don't marry them so that way they can kind of still sleep around and not be committed. So as a result, you got a lot of women there who do want to get married, who do want to start families, but a lot of a lot of men there won't commit to them. So that's why they're very happy that there are American men who do want to settle down with them and do want to get married and start traditional, simple families. And that's why you will see plenty, plenty of videos on TikTok of Filipinas reaching out to American men and saying, hey, they want to, they want a simple life with you. They want you to come out there uh, wife them up they want they want to cook and clean for you and uh you know cook it clean for you be affectionate affectionate with you make love to you and be your queen you know so um so that's that so that's why when you go there they're going to be looking for you like i mean it's um as i said before so um so just something to keep in mind so um i'm gonna end it on that i kind of made this video a little bit longer than i wanted it to be but um Please, I, I I think I'm somewhat shadow banned, so please hit the thumbs up. Please hit the thumbs up. I, I definitely appreciate it. Hit the notification bell. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not. I see there's a lot of people watching the videos but not subscribing. Please subscribe if you can. Please leave comments. Tell me what you think about this woman and her crazy thought process. And until next time, this is your boy, the Passport Bro Wingman, signing off. Dear Passport Boys, Dear Passport Bros, stop calling yourself Passport Boys and Passport Bros. Are you going to the Philippines to look for a Filipina queen or what? 
So stop calling yourself passport boys and passport pros. Start calling yourself passport kings. That's right. You are a passport kings. Now, if you're going to the Philippines to so just pack around, pull around, screw around as many women as you want, then call yourself passport bros and passport boys. Otherwise, if you want to go to the Philippines to look for a Filipina queen and she will treat you like a king, then you better start calling yourself passport king. Understood? Good.